when at the age of eight, moved to the UK, you know, I will say I moved to the UK. It was not my decision. You know, I was happy to stay behind. My parents had a reason. Who moved to the UK? Got to the UK, and of course, you know, I couldn't really speak English, you know. And at the time, I had a translator. They had a, a young guy, same age as me, translating for me, yeah? And the things he would say would get me really angry. I don't know if things were lost in translation or some of these kids in my school were just stupid. One of the guys looked at me. You know, British accent is a bit different. You know, it's really soft. You've got to sort of speak like that. You know what I mean? Yeah? That's aggressive. It's a bit soft. You know what I mean? They say their lips are smaller. That's why they speak like that. Our lips are bigger. They go, boo, we release. We too big. British sort of speak like this. And they shake their head a lot. Speak like this. So this young guy, Tom, came up to me and said, right, tell him, tell him, tell him. I could see that. All I could see was, young, young, here. But he said, tell him, he's African, right? Can he speak African? I said, tell him. He's stupid, right? Can he speak stupidity? <laughs> oh, yes, he can. I had to teach people at the age of eight the amount of pressure Africa has put on me. You people don't know. <laughs> I said to the kid, Africa, what do you mean can I speak African? What do you want me to do? Speak a cocktail of languages. Bawoni, eh? It is saying, hey, Yakuna Matata, what do you want me to do? <laughs> he said, well, I thought, mate, I thought Africa was a continent, son. I thought it was a continent. I said, no, Africa is a continent. He goes, yeah, but what? He said, well, do you know what continent is? It's a cluster of countries. When countries come together, he said, well, yeah, it doesn't really matter. He said, well, tell me about Africa, then tell me about Africa. So I said, well, yeah, it is a continent. Many different countries. You know, north, south, west, and east. He said, well, tell me about some. And in the UK, the majority that we have, West Africans, Ghanaians and Nigerians. Okay? So I had to break it down to him. I said, well, for example, you know, you have the Ghanaians, right? Anyone from Ghana here? Good, let's talk about them. <laughs> so you have the Ghanaians, right? Now, Ghanaians, you know, they, they haven't really experienced war. You don't really hear stories about, oh, something happened in Ghana. And they, they're relaxed. They, they, you know, they were like the first, the first nation to gain independence. They've been relaxed since 1915. Since. You see, since, since, since you've been waiting for freedom. Since you've been waiting for freedom. They have been, they have been gone. Since you have been waiting. They have been gone. They have been. So, the Ghanaians are relaxed. And you can tell from the way they speak. Ghanaian people speak like they're singing. Okay, so when I went to Joanna's back, <laughs> and it was just it. I went to the Mandela Square. Oh my God, oh my, oh Charlie, it was amazing. <laughs> it, the first time I got to Ghana, guys, the first time I got, the way they welcomed me at the airport was amazing. I didn't know I had so many A's in my surname. My dad would be like, Eddie, hey, you have upgraded us. I got to Accra Airport. Oh my God. Oh my God. Eddie Cardi. You are going to have a wonderful time in Ghana. Let me tell you something. That was just the men. <laughs> so the guy said to me, oh, all right, fair enough, Ed, fair enough. Well, what about, what about Nigerians? Niger Nigeria in the house? Yeah. Oh, these, are, that, that, these are nice Nigerians. Ooh, basketball, have you trained your people well? These are nice, <laughs> these are nice Nigerians. Because usually the response is, yes, we are here. And what's your problem, man? Are you with us? I agree with you. Just do what you are doing. Well, do what I do. I said to him, Nigerians are very passionate people. The first time I came across a Nigerian couple, beautiful. You guys a couple? Okay. I was <laughs> Happy Valentine's. First time I came across a Nigerian couple, I saw these guys from afar, right? And I was concerned, right? Because this guy, I couldn't hear what they were saying, but the way this guy was talking to his woman, I thought, no. No, 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 this looks like domestic violence. You should have, um, my brother, I'm telling you. From afar, oh, you can see. And you can see the woman was crying. So I thought, no, this is Great Britain. We have laws, women have rights. So I started running to save this woman. Started running. When I got close, I realized this man was not being violent, ladies and gentlemen. I learned a lot that day. This man was being romantic. Wait for it. It's the words that came out of this Nigerian that's left a beautiful scar in my heart. It's the passion. Nigerian, passionate. The guy was looking at his wife like, hey, Funke, after 35 years, you are still looking wonderful. Hey, look at this woman that God gave me. Hey, if I divorce you, somebody kill me. I will never leave you. Me, leave you. No new friends, no new friends. <laughs> 